This tidy little pattern is called the Gallagher Special. It's not all that well known, but in the Northeast United States, it's been quietly proving itself for decades. Here, author, fly tire, and blogger Matt Grobert is going to tie one on a size 14 Mustad 3906B nymph hook. Matt begins by mashing the hook barb in the jaws of his tying vise and then gets the hook firmly secured. For thread, he's loaded a bobbin with a spool of black 6O Danville. Get your thread started on the hook shank, leaving a full eye length space behind the hook eye. Take a few wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps to just behind the hook point. For hackle, Matt selects a single feather from a furnace neck. On one side of the feather, pull the fibers down roughly perpendicular to the stem, then strip a dozen or so off. By aligning the stripped off butt ends, you'll also align the tips. Measure to form a tail about a hook shank in length, then transfer that measurement rearward to the tie-in point. Take wraps of tying thread to secure the fibers to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the bend. Then, take wraps forward to approximately the one-third point on the shank. Fine gold wire is used to rib and reinforce the body of the fly. An 8-inch length is enough for numerous flies. Secure the wire to the underside of the hook all the way back to the base of the tail. Then return your tying thread to the original tie-in point. Two peacock curls, snipped from just below the eye, are used to form the body of the fly. If taken from the right side of the feather, they'll be tied in butts first. If you can, maintain the hurl's orientation as you lay them against the near side of the hook and take wraps of tying thread to secure them. End with your tying thread at the back edge of the hook eye. Get hold of the hurls together and start making touching wraps with them. You should end up with a nice full body on the fly, just like Matt's getting here. When you reach the base of the tail, get hold of the gold wire and start making open spiral wraps with it up the body, effectively counter-wrapping the peacock curl as you go. The wire not only adds some shine and segmentation, but it's really essential in protecting the delicate hurl. When you reach your tying thread, use it to secure the wire behind the hook eye, then helicopter the wire to break it off close. You can now reach in with the tips of your tying scissors and snip off the excess hurl. Using the same furnace hackle feather as you did for the tail, pull down a few fibers right beneath the tip and then strip the fibers on both sides of the stem below them off. Expose the tip of the feather, then measure to make sure the hackle fibers are about a hook shank in length. Snip the tip of the feather off square, leaving a small triangular tie-in anchor. With the shiny side of the feather facing you, lay the anchor against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it. Pull the feather up to vertical and gently fold the fibers rearward as you take touching wraps forward up the hook. Three or four wraps should be plenty. When you reach bare stem, use your tying thread to anchor it. You can then use the tips of your tying scissors to snip the stem off close. Once again, preen the hackle fibers rearward and this time use just a few wraps of tying thread to hold them back, but try to keep the head of the fly nice and small. Finally, do a three or four turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. A group of fellas here in New Jersey have tried to keep this fly secret for years. Let's hope they don't retaliate for Matt showing it here. After all, Matt likes to fish, but has no desire to sleep with them.